I'm coming to the end of my time here at the uh, Youth Senate of 2018, which has been just a real privilege, a really interesting experience for me. And one of the more intriguing uh, aspects of it is I was elected relatory of my small language group. Now that's all Synod speak for the one who's on for taking notes as the group speaks and then synthesizing all the material into a report, which is then given before the whole Synod, including the Pope. So it's been a way to really keep your mind in the game. You know, your mind can sometimes drift off during long meetings. But as relatory, I had to listen to what everybody was saying, take notes on it, and then compile it. And it enabled me, too, just to get my mind more deeply into the themes that were intriguing the Synod Fathers. So we heard interventions from the floor in the general sessions, but then in the small groups. We had about 35 people in our group. Now, all English speakers, but from all over the world. Don't think for a second they're all from you know, the U.S. and Canada and England. They were from Iraq, they were from Nigeria, they were from uh, the Far East, the Middle East, etc. So it was a very interesting uh, worldwide perspective. Now, what were some of these themes? And there were tons of them. Uh, I'll just uh, discuss a, a few of them with you. The first one, I think, is the, uh, something close to my own heart, uh, the social and digital uh, media. Uh, we had young people, of course, at the Senate, including in the small groups. So some of the, the young people who were here were very active participants in the small group discussions. We have some younger bishops, I think, who are, are using social media. Some of the older ones aren't digitally uh, skilled, but everybody gets it. Everybody understands that this is the world that young people inhabit and that the church has an enormous opportunity to use the social media for evangelical purposes. Uh, I tried to make that argument whenever I could, both on the, the grand scale and in the small group, that it's a kind of miracle of divine providence that at a time when so many young people are leaving the church and they're not going to come to our programs, we can't expect them to come to our parishes and so on, but we can reach them through the social media. Uh, the fathers certainly see the dark side of social media, you know, how superficial it can be, how it can encourage uh, isolation. It can um, really get in the way sometimes of real interpersonal relationship. Everyone gets that. However, they also get the enormous evangelical potential of the social media. You know, something else that really struck me, it came through very strongly in our group, what I would call an anthropology of vocation. It comes up especially in part two of our working document. So much of the contemporary world is predicated upon an anthropology of self-invention. Right? Is I'm free, and in my freedom, I decide who I'm going to be, decide what my values are, decide who I am. Well, see, that's repugnant to a biblical anthropology, which says fundamentally we're all called. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, you know, the Lord says. Uh, we're summoned. Paul says there's, there's a power already at work in us that can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. See how that stands athwart an anthropology of self-invention. I think what the Synod Fathers were seeing was we need to awaken our young people to a deeper sense of this. Now here's Pope Francis on discernment. See, what am I discerning ultimately? Well, not something as superficial as, you know, what am I going to do um, tomorrow? I'm discerning who is the person God wants me to be. Notice it's not, oh, I'm deciding the person I'll be. I'm discerning, I'm seeking to understand and know who God wants me to be. And see, relatedly now, a third theme. I heard so many of the young people, both in the Senate floor and in the small group, saying, what we want is practical training in the ways of holiness. Young people are hungry for holiness, and I don't mean that in some pious way. I mean holiness, wholeness. That's becoming the person God wants you to be. That's finding peace. It's finding joy, your purpose in life. How do I discern that? What do I do? Help me. What they want is spiritual paternity and spiritual maternity. The church as mother and then church people as mothers and fathers teaching and helping uh, young people to understand. Training in liturgy, training in prayer, in Lectio Divina. Um, one of the things that stays in my mind from the uh, general sessions, one of the young people said, we don't want bureaucrats, we want fathers, talking about priests and bishops. And I think that's dead right, that state of my mind. You know, we do have a bureaucratic role to play, that's true, I mean, any administrator. But nevertheless, the young people, they're not looking for bureaucrats. They want fathers. They want people to help them in this great act of discerning what God wants. I heard that theme an awful lot uh, in and around the Senate. Um, 
You know, relatedly, the, the first part of our document, and, and we'll see now when the, the final document comes out what has changed, there's a lot of sociology in it, and I think that's all good. You know, part of the, uh, the task here is to see what's the world like today for young people? What's the world they're living in? And, you know, the Catholic tradition is happy to use sociology, psychology, philosophy, whatever is available. So there's a lot of sociology uh, in the document. But a lot, of the, a lot of the Synod Fathers said we need an overriding, an overarching biblical vision that, as it were, controls the sociology. And the one that kept coming up over and over again, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, which, of course, is, is you know, one of the great classic expressions in the New Testament, but is really applicable to this situation. Look at these two uh, erstwhile disciples of Jesus. And in, in Luke's vision, walking the wrong way, and they're walking away from Jerusalem. Nevertheless, Jesus joins them, not in judgment, not, not reprimanding them, but gently asking, well, what, what are you talking about as you go? Jesus enters in a listening mode into their world, even as they walk the wrong way. Well, there's all the, the Pope Francis themes, right, of, of listening, accompaniment, discernment, etc. But then in that key moment, Jesus um, begins to teach. And he teaches them from the, what we call the Old Testament, all that has to do with him. He is the lens through which life is properly read. So a lot of the Synod Fathers said, let's use Emmaus as a controlling sort of icon throughout the document. And uh, I thought that was a, very, uh, was a very powerful thing. Another theme, boy, it was, it was present right from the beginning, the, the sex abuse scandal. Uh, it would be pointless for us to uh, turn away from it, to bare our heads in the sand. I mean, this is a major crisis for our church and a crisis at many levels, but certainly of evangelical credibility. How can young people take us seriously if we're not willing to uh, uh, discipline ourselves in this very important way? I love the language of uh, Archbishop Anthony Fisher very early on, and maybe it was the first night of the Synod, asking young people for forgiveness for all the ways that we've, uh, we've betrayed them, we've let them down. Many of the Synod Fathers, both in the Grand uh, Synod Hall and in the small groups, calling for accountability, transparency at all levels of the church's life. You know, again, it's not just an issue to look at for its legal and canonical implications. It's got evangelical implications. If we don't do this, we will not have credibility to proclaim the gospel. Just one more theme uh, that has really struck me, and I, I must say, I'll, I'll say it in kind of an attitude of, of confession. You know, I'm a, I'm a first world person. And uh, I, I do sometimes have a myopic vision. I see the church from the standpoint of, of the first world and from the West. How wonderful to hear voices from all over the Catholic world, but especially voices from uh, persecuted Christians. The strongest reactions in the Synod Hall during, during the whole time were from uh, Christians talking about those being persecuted. A young man from Iraq who actually was in our small language group, very powerfully witnessing to this. Also a bishop from India talking about the, the active persecution going on in, uh, in India. And, you know, it just links you, doesn't it, to all the martyrs across the ages. I was in the, uh, the catacombs this morning saying Mass, and some of the early martyrs uh, were buried there. Uh, that, to me, was a tremendous uh, eye-opening experience. Uh, you know, as we maybe fuss a little bit about our first world concerns, as important as they are with social media and all the things I've talked about, but you realize that in other parts of the world, especially young Christians are dying for their faith. Uh, that to me was a really powerful uh, witness and that came up a lot in the, uh, in the small groups. So it's been a privilege, I really mean that, it's been a privilege to be here in Rome, to be with the Holy Father, to be with uh, my brother bishops and especially with these, uh, these young people. And it's, it certainly broadened my perspective on a lot of things. And I hope it, it'll bear fruit now in the lives of our young people.